Hi, and welcome to Monday, July 27th. My name is Michael Bean, and this is your MyFreeActingClass.com lesson four uh, the, for the week. Okay, so um, schedule's changing a little bit. I don't know if you've seen the check-in from Kirsten. She's still gonna be available uh, every Monday uh, afternoon. I think Monday at noon, she doesn't ask me anything uh, on her Facebook page. Um, I'm still figuring out what's going to happen with the lessons uh, this week. I have some really fun guests planned. If you go to myfreeactingclass.com, uh, you can see uh, the schedule for this week. You know, today I'm doing camera technique. Uh, tomorrow we've got um, Michelle Krieber, a very successful uh, voiceover artist, and I'll show you her resume before she starts working with you, and she's gonna do a couple of lessons for us in the next few weeks. Uh, and then some of you have been asking about voice work, uh, and so I'm bringing in an expert in voice work and accent work, a woman named Liz McLaughlin. She teaches at the Vancouver Film School, and she teaches her own classes. Uh, and uh, I've worked with her uh, on set, you know, and I've just known her as a peer for years. So she's coming in on Wednesday. She also is gonna teach the next couple of Wednesdays, uh, talking about voice work and why that's important for actors, you know, and a little bit more detail about her approach to it. Uh, to get you started, I'm going to show you a Vimeo video. Uh, this is uh, one of the scripts that we used in a, uh, in a class Oh gosh, like you know, uh, more than a month ago now. Uh, and Christian Ridley, who comes to class, uh, recorded this at home and like added sound effects. And I just thought it was a fun thing to add. Now, while I do that, I want you to, I'm trying the new poll function. And I want you to let me know if you want to do a drama or comedy because I pulled so many fun options uh, for camera technique today. You know, so if you can multitask and answer the poll while I show you this. Uh, so, this is Christian. Isn't that great and fun and creepy? Uh, it was a, a very short script from Supernatural, you know, where the little girl like kills grandpa, you know, just by like twisting her hand. Uh, and that's so where he recorded that. Okay, uh, gosh, you know, we've, uh, some, uh, here we go team. Uh, so we got seven people want drama, eight people want comedy. Uh, I guess we're just gonna have to do both. Uh, so we'll alternate, you know, we, uh, We'll start, yay, Christian's here, look at that. Um, so fun, yeah, that's exactly what I want you know, from this is to, and I know that uh, Kirsten really wanted to see you all making your own work you know, and getting excited about what it would take for that. You know, and so every time somebody takes something from class you know, and brings it into their own practice, it makes me happy. So please feel free uh, to share things uh, especially if you're working on uh, things we're talking about in class, you know, because sharing little bits and pieces of those with the group um, makes it, um, you know, gives it more of a sense of community, I think. Uh, and so here we go. Uh, let's start with, uh, let's start with looking at all of your videos. Uh, and uh, just to like the quick uh, reminder, you know, I, I think everybody's probably been here uh, before, but we've got, What's important for uh, the uh, taped film TV audition is that you have an eye light, a light reflecting your eyes. I could probably turn off you know, uh, most of these eye lights to show you what that would look like with less. You know, so I'm at the studio today. And so, right, the less eye light there is, and especially if I, yeah, there we go. So um, this is, so I've turned off the lights that are in front. Now, off, uh, I think the best way to get a good eye light is just to set, put your setup directly across from a big window. Uh, but you can see that I just don't look as alive. And even if I'm nice and up close where the camera can see me, what'll happen is if there's no eye light, people are like, I don't know why, I just don't, I don't feel it as much. You know, so eye light's really important. Uh, basically just set up across from a big window, which is for the last couple of months, you know, what I've been doing at home, no fancy lights at all. You can put a desk lamp right next to you, anything. You know, like just something so there's that little light reflected in your eyes. 
Uh, you want uh, decent audio, which means you want to make sure you're closer to the camera than whoever's reading with you. Or you know, if you're going to, I think somebody was asking this in the, um, uh, the questions uh, the uh, last Tuesday, maybe. Uh, that they ask, you know, like, so if I'm going to spend money, sort of what should I get? You know, I think that your best investment for a home setup, you know, once you've got a clean background ground to set up for yourself, uh, is some kind of audio. You know, so if anybody here uses an external microphone, um, I, I would love to hear what kind of microphone you're using. You know, because I know uh, on Tuesday I was like, well, here's the brand that I use, and um, somebody else. Uh, jumped in and said, well, here's the brand that I use. Yeah, but if you have an external microphone uh, that you think you, you like the audio on, we'd love to hear what it is that you're using. You know, so just throw that in the chat window and that'll be good for everybody. Uh, right, clean background can look like you know, what Elaine's got here. You know, uh, clean background uh, can look like you know, what uh, you know, Caden's got here. You know, like the, all of the fuzzy blanket on the couch, you know, probably would need to be framed out you know, if he was doing recording. Um, clean background could look like what Nikki's got. You know, the, it doesn't have to be you know, gray or blue. Uh, the uh, Joseph's background is good. And look at this eye light. See? Yeah, right? His, his eyes are shiny. That's what we need to see. So there's your just quick reminder of those things. Now let's uh, pull up one of these scripts. Uh, so if we're starting with uh, if we're starting with drama, and this one's uh, doable in your chair, uh, this one's interesting and tricky. It's for a young person. Uh, it's from a project uh, from years ago called Dawn of War. You know, so uh, if we were uh, doing the story session, we would read through all of this crossed up uh, stuff in detail. But instead, we're just going to pick it up from, uh, right, so there's titans clawing their way out of the cube. Uh-oh. Uh, start. Interior room, unknown location, night. Eyes snapping open in terror. A young girl, nine, breathing in short gasps, trembling, frightened by what she's just seen. We are, it's dark, and we see the young girl on the floor with three other girls her age sleeping. In time, we'll come to know her as Phaedra, the Sibylline Oracle. Now, you could look that up uh, on Wikipedia and find out what the Sibylline Oracle you know, was pretty easily. Uh, one of the girls opens her eyes and sees Phaedra shivering in the dark. And she reaches out and touches her arm, comforting her. In a cryptic language, although that's crossed out because they've got an English, she asks, young high priestess, what did you see? A beat. A beat is a new thought or shift in the tone of the scene, usually accompanied by a small pause. Uh, Phaedra, war off her dark, foreboding eyes. Now, one of the reasons that I wanted uh, to show you this you know, is that when I see notes like this, you know, off her dark, foreboding eyes, this is a very literary note. This is the kind of thing that you put in a novel so that you understand uh, what the characters are feeling. You know, because the human facial expressions are actually extremely complex, right? There are you know, what, like a hundred muscles, you know, more than a hundred muscles in here. Somebody, you know, took that biology class and really remembers, can put in the exact number if you want. Uh, the, uh, and so it's a literary reference that gives us a sense of the feeling, but it's not a note for the actor. You know, so when it says her eyes darken or off her dark foreboding eyes, you know, or, you know, uh, his face clouds with anger, these are the kind of things you'd see in a novel and you, as an actor, I have to translate that into, oh, okay, I understand what the feeling is. And this has come up in the question and answer period quite a bit, you know, but I'm, as an acting teacher, I'm uh, uh, strongly resistant to any amount of make this face and people will probably believe it. You know, it's very hard to do face acting and do a believable performance. You know, I'm uh, much more fan of let's pretend that you're there, let's figure out you know, what you're imagining around you and trust that your face will do what it does. Uh, so what we've got here is breathing in short gasps, trembling and frightened by what you've just seen, and you're asleep, right? So your eyes snap open from sleep. <gasps> you know, uh, the breathing, the trembling, uh, it's dark. You know, I'm going to give you the line, what did you see? There's going to be a beat, so you're going to pause, you know, and then you're going to say war. Right? So if you're doing this, all you need to say is war. You know, we know that it's meant to be dark and foreboding. You know, so that the uh, this idea of a you know, war you know, is a big deal. You know, so anybody who's in a chair, you know, can be a demo for this one for me. 
the uh, Kate Nemes save you for the comedy because I know that's what your jam is. Maddox, I would love that. Great. So let's start with uh, you know, Maddox uh, being a demo for me. All right. Uh, so tip your camera down a little bit, you know, so that uh, and then scooch. Uh, scooch your body forward in the chair without scooching the chair forward so that you can actually lean your head on the back. You know, uh, what I see over and over when people are trying to sleep is they do this or this and it just, just doesn't work at all. You know, Maddox has, uh, has it easy because his chair has a high back. Right, and then you just tip your head off the one side just a little bit. You know, uh, the, exactly, and you know, that'll do sleep for us you know, on camera. You know, now, the, if you were taping this, Nobody's going to see what's happening before or after. You know, so, the little bit different, you know, uh, if you are uh, recording this at home, you know, uh, and if you are uh, doing a Zoom audition. But let's say you're recording this at home, because you know, ninety percent of all our auditions are going to be like that for a while. So, let's cheat, you know, by uh, so that you don't have to worry about like getting your body into like full fear panic mode. But just stand up. Don't worry about adjusting the camera. This is just for your moment before. Stand up, you know, and jump up and down. Jump, 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 jump. Get your knees up, knees up, knees up. We're just trying to get your heart rate way up. There you go. Yeah, yeah. The more soccer you play, the more you're going to need to jump. Jump, jump, jump. Oh, come on. Yeah. Jump, jump, jump. Good. And then come back to the chair. All right. Good. You know, and uh, lean back. You know, good. And what I want to hear is little sounds and like, <laughs> You know, and uh, on, on, as soon as I say stand by, you're already making sound, you're twitching on action, you jolt upright, you know, the, uh, again, make sound. It's not gonna say, if they, they're not gonna, the writer's not gonna write out the sounds, because when they do, actors go, I g ear. You know, <laughs> like, so writers don't put them in, so you're always allowed to make sound. In fact, it's way better if you make them instead of the writer doing them. Good, stand by. And, Right, so, already, so start making sound. <laughs> right, I want to see right from the first moment the camera picks you up that you're uncomfortable and you're having a terrible nightmare. So just sound and action. What did you see? War. Beautiful, and that's all it is. Uh, the uh, you could uh, play with. Uh, right, so let's get somebody else to tr uh, to uh, try it. You know, and play with what you can do with that beat. Yeah, great, Ariana would love it. You know, so I uh, just tilt your camera down so there's no space over your head. All right, uh, scoot your body forward in the chair so you can lean your head back. Yep, you're gonna need to scooch further down so you can actually physically rest your head on the back of your chair. Maybe you have to adjust your chair. There you go, good. And then just, yep, yeah, there it is. Yeah, like that. And just off to one side a little bit. Right, so just, just yep. Yeah. Either way, just rest your head off to one side a little bit. No, not, not move your chair. There you go, yeah, yeah. Because straight on, you know, you look like you're tied to the chair maybe, but now you look like you're asleep. Uh, you're probably gonna wanna take your glasses off. Yeah, and uh, th uh, this time when you wake up, I want you to go, ah! You know, so, in, in, uh, so if you had a Zoom audition, you know, instead of jumping up and down, you know, which we, this is a trickier thing to pull off. Um, I'm getting some feedback, so I'm just gonna see if I can mute everybody. Then we'll unmute you again, Ariana. Sorry, Ariana. Uh, and so let's say you have a Zoom audition and you don't have the option to do all that like jumping around. You know, so uh, scooch forward in the chair so you can lean your head on the back. And, and I know it feels weird, but part of acting practice is getting used to doing the thing that feels weird and trusting that like your character feels weird too. So it's kind of, so it's okay if you do, as long as you're not actually harm, you know, uh, like at risk of harm, then feeling weird is like, that's just the way it works. You know, so sleep. Good, you know, and start, start making little like unhappy sounds. They exactly, uh. stand by and action. <laughs> What did you see? War. Beautiful, beautiful. And so she made this really great choice there just to like, uh, to uh, bring in this extreme stillness, which totally worked for that. You know, so now you've got uh, like how to bring in stillness. 
into a scene? I'm fine, Mom. <laughs> That's so great. Ariane, we, we, we heard you saying, like, I'm fine. Everybody's worried about you on your end. Of course. You know, like you're taking your acting class and you start screaming. I'd be worried about you, too. Uh, fun. Isn't it nice when uh, you uh, act so convincingly that other people uh, are really worried about you? Uh, I got this phone call. Uh, so I, I run uh, BD Street Casting Studios, uh, and there's, there's an aquarium store next door. Um, the, and I got this phone call. I don't know if we've been here maybe a year uh, from the one who runs the aquarium store. It's like, um, there's somebody in the bathroom screaming like they're being murdered, and I'm just really worried, and I'm about to call the police, and I thought maybe I'd call first and ask if there was a class. And so, of course, there was an acting class, and somebody was practicing their scene in the bathroom. And so when I got the acting teacher who was renting the space here on the phone, she was like, oh, sorry, yeah, Charlie's practicing her scene in the bathroom, and it is a scene where she's being murdered, but she'll be really flattered that the lady really thought she was being murdered. Like, that's, that's gonna make her really happy. Which was like, oh my God. Only actors, right? Okay, uh, let's uh, let's take a look at one of these comedy scenes. Um, so this one's fun. I, uh, I've got an adult new uh, comedy scene. Doctor Bronski from Christmas Story Two. Here, uh, so we're gonna again, um, right? There's dentist offer doc, on Doctor on Herbert Bronski. So the, basically, the uh, character is telling a story. The butcher had a drill. He pedaled with his foot. The butcher had little use for ne such newfangled novelties as Novocaine. The butcher used his own special code. You know, and then the scene starts with, right? So that's uh, voiceover, right? That's the, so that's the story about the horrible, horrible dentist. He turns to us grinning. He wears thick glasses uh, that look like the bottom of Coke bottles. Ooh, uh, Shanda, would you read these, uh, Dr. Bronski for me? Yeah, okay. Great. Starting with, hey. hmm? Right from here. Oh, there. Now, what does that say? Now Sorry. let's- Oh, I got it, but no, I got it good. I'm good. Okay. Good. Now, let's see what we can see. Right, so he's he's evil. His name is his name is the Butcher. <laughs> Angle on Randy, in the dentist chair, still in his patent helmet, mouth pried open, absolutely terrified, which really meant, let's inflict what we can inflict. Dr. Bronski thrusts a mirror and periodontal probe up into Randy's mouth, pauses for a delectable moment, then dives in. He prods, Randy whimpers. Hmm, a lot of inflammation. Some inflammation here, ooh, and here. I never saw so much inflammation. I can't tell if this is inflamed or not. Right, so it's such a fun character to be the evil dentist, you know, uh, and so if you are, all right, so, um, Shanda, uh, can we, would you mind continuing to, to demo for me? Sure, yeah. Okay, and so uh, if I spotlight Shanda's video, you, know, um, you probably want to uh, back up just a smidge. Yep, perfect. So she's in a medium close up, just head you know, uh, to the bottom of her armpit. You know, and uh, you want to place, even though it's, uh, you want to place the person's mouth that you're dealing with, just off to one side of the camera, just below where the camera can pick up your hands. So ideally we would see like the edge of your hands you know, uh, and uh, yeah, 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 right? Like super creepy, you know, the, yeah, but probably off to one side because otherwise it's gonna look like you're adjusting the can. Yeah, so even if we just periodically see a finger, you know, and one of the things you can do uh, is you can poke your own hands so you're giving uh, yourself some resistance. And then, so we're just gonna see this, you know, and the more you enjoy it, the more evil you're going to come across. You know, this is something that's come up before uh, in these lessons, you know, but, you're the actor. Like you actually are just playing a game and enjoying yourself. You know, it's the context of the scene that makes you seem evil to everybody else. But you just get to be like, yeah, ooh, hurting people. This is because you're an actor. You're playing a game. You're actually doing something fun. It's everybody else that's like, ah, she's a horrible person. Uh, the good. You know, so uh, the, and just just hack the line as best you can. It was just like inflammation, you know, I never saw so much inflammation. And, you know, and then just like you find something really interesting, you're like, can't tell if this is inflamed or not. And you dig in there, you know, and I'll, um, uh, uh, Joseph, uh, you wanna help me out? Okay. Good, so every time you see Shanda poke something, just go, ah! <laughs> Stand by. I don't know if I can scream. <laughs> Just, just little, little whimpers then, you're fine. <laughs> okay. 
standby standard and action. Mm, a lot of inflammation here. <laughs> and here, I have never seen this much inflammation. It's in, oh, there's more over uh, here. Oh, I don't even know if that's inflamed or not. And just give me a big scream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Shanda. Yeah, Joseph, it feels super weird, doesn't it? Right? Like it's uh, th this is part of being an actor, you know, is uh, getting used to that uncomfortable feeling, you know. And it's um, I think it's part of where acting practice becomes useful in your life. You know, if you have if you were used to feeling uncomfortable, in the sense that you're like, oh yeah, I'm not going to make a story that feeling uncomfortable means something bad about what's happening. I don't know. That gives you lots more options as you move through the world. Uh, the uh, Elaine or Candy or Deborah, do any of you want to try being an evil dentist? Yeah, Elaine does. Okay, good. Uh, so now I, I, I know this is going to seem like a contradiction you know, because I said you know, that uh, I'm not a big believer you know, in face acting, you know, that I, it's not something you know, that I advise people do. But for this one, because you are literally a caricature, you know, uh, I think that starting with a giant evil smile you know, uh, is uh, you probably can get away. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. And so just, just keep that all the way through the scene. <laughs> and if it's too much, you know, then we can always, you know, if, like if we're workshopping it for an audition, we can always go, okay, wow, that was really funny, but it was too much, we gotta scale it down. You know, but if we don't go all the way with it, how are we ever gonna know? Yeah, and so um, the, uh, who's, who's gonna do my, the screams for me? Caden, you wanna do the screams? Okay, great. Uh, so Caden's going to do all the screams. You know, so, <clears throat> so, really, so really take your time. Inflammation, poke, you know, and Caden will go, ah! And just like, just enjoy all of the weird sounds Caden makes. Because again, you're doing the actor thing. Like you actually just get to think it's hilarious whatever sound Caden make, makes, you know, uh, and fully just actually show us how in, uh, authentically you're enjoying that. And we'll experience you as evil. You know, uh, start with the big evil smile. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> Stand by and action. Hmm. What I see here? Inflammation. Caden, that's you. Mm. What ah! inflammation? Caden. <laughs> inflammation here. Ooh, I don't know if it's really inflamed or not. <laughs> 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 yeah, right? But with something that's this broad comedy, you almost can't go too far. Elaine, thank you so much. Like your, your, the, the delight you took in that was really pleasing. Uh, all right, so what about, uh, so then uh, I've got a, let's see, I've got another comedy and another drama. We probably don't have time for both, but we just did an adult one, you know, so let's do the kid one. Uh, this is from a sketch comedy show called The John Doerr Show. Uh, I believe it was uh, cast and shot in Toronto. Uh, it's, I, I, I don't think it's been on the air for a long time. Uh, exterior sidewalk bake sale day. Oh, uh, I need somebody to play uh, John and somebody to play uh, the kid, you know, so I, I need a kid, you know, Candy, we haven't, uh, you, uh, do you want to, uh, to read John for me? Okay, right. uh, and, uh, oh yeah, I'll, I'll let you do the thing, you know, uh, Kaden, you want to read uh, the, the kid? Okay, do it, you know, the, so here we go. Uh, is John is in a bake sale looking over some fresh goodies. Behind the table is a little girl, 10-ish. John is talking on his cell phone. On the other end is his friend going off about a stag in Vegas. We only really hear the broken jock type Vegas garble. John stacks up a pile of baked goods with fishes and pockets for cast. He finds nothing. Hang on a second. Do you take credit cards? Of course. The little girl pulls out a credit card machine. John hands her his card. She swipes it. It's declined. I have to destroy. Destroy this your card. Please don't. The little girl takes out a hammer and starts bashing the card on the table as John looks on in horror. She wipes the mangled card on a raw steak, sopping up the juices, then tosses it tosses it to a dog who chews it up. Oh my gosh. 
ever hear of a pair of scissors? Good. Yeah, and there's, just give me the line again, but with like way more energy than you think it needs, Candy. Gosh, ever hear of a pair of scissors? Yeah, right. That, that even that's not quite enough energy. You know, the, right, because the, for a sketch comedy, you're trying to make people laugh. So the reason that I pulled this one was because of this physicality at the end. You know, the, the little girl takes out a hammer and starts bashing the card on the table. She wipes the mangled card on a raw steak, sopping up the juices, you know, tosses it to a dog. So we, uh, I reviewed this last week, you know, but first you try it exactly the way it's written. Then you're like, okay, I'm gonna keep everything, try every, keeping everything out of frame. And only then do you, are you like, okay, I'm gonna change it to something that's kind of like that, that helps tell the story. You know, um, and just know that 90% of actors, when they run into confusing physical business, will skip it. You know, so that's great news for you because it means that you will tell the story more clearly or better than everybody else. Uh, and so the, uh, and so Caden, uh, you wanna try this? Yep. I figured you would. Yeah, and uh, the, uh, and so um, what you're gonna need, you know, uh, so, so good, so move closer to camera. Yeah, excellent, yeah, yeah, nice and close, excellent. You know, so uh, I want you to, uh, to hammer, uh, to take a fist and hammer just off screen. Okay, but, but use the other hand so I can't see your hand is empty. Okay, good, then move this, move closer to this side of the screen if you're gonna use your right hand. Move closer to your, there you go, good, yep. You know, uh, and so, good, and then make sound, go, ah! while you do it. Make sound. Good. You know, yeah, exactly. And then turn back and smile at him really nice. Good. So remember, move closer to the right because I, I don't want to see that your hand doesn't have a hammer in it. Good. Exactly. So give me that sweet smile you know, and say, uh, I have to destroy your card. So on action, you're just going to say, I have to destroy your card and say, please don't. And you're just going to take the card that's in your hand. You're going to put it just off to the right and you're going to hammer it and yell. You know, and then you're going to look back at me and smile. And then you're going to take the card you know, and, uh, and let's give the dog a name. What's the dog's name? Mm, Tashi. Just go to say, here boy, and, and throw him the card. Okay, so back to me and smile. Then you pick it up and you throw it to the dog. So let's try it. Just look right at me. Remember your line is, I have to destroy, destroy your card. Stand by and action. I have to destroy your card. Oh, please don't. <laughs> Good God, ever hear of him? Yeah, boy. There's a Oh, <laughs> there we go. 5, 39, and 31 seconds. I thought that would make Caden happy. Right, uh, Caden, I hope you don't mind being used as, uh, as ongoing you know, practice, but also entertainment uh, for all of us. Uh, the, uh, that's exactly four o'clock. Uh, I'm gonna stick around for the next few minutes and answer questions. Uh, anybody who needs to head out now, uh, please do. And I will promise I will, uh, post this to the confidenceoncamera.com website and to Facebook uh, today or at the very latest tomorrow. You know, I got behind there for a while. But. Uh, bye, friends. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye. Okay, so ask me anything. Uh, yeah, Joseph, go ahead, jump in. Um, yes, um, since Kirsten's only teaching on Mondays, will there be a new schedule or new days? Uh, my plan is to keep these classes going at the same day and time, you know, just for consistency. You know, uh, basically, Kirsten has just had to bow out of this project, you know, so, so she will no longer be participating in the, the My Free Acting class project, but it's because she's got so much awesome stuff going on on her own. So, you, you know, anybody who's like, oh, that's so sad, well, you can find her at screenactingschool.com, which is right there in uh, the chat with us. So screenactingschool.com, and you can find all of her stuff. Yeah, and uh, she uh, has uh, multiple, like very affordable, very accessible you know, online courses and you know, a number of free uh, programs on there as well. So. Uh, anybody got an acting question? Doesn't have to be in any way related to the ridiculous scripts we did today. Deborah, please. Um, I just got this uh, mic in the mail. Finally, I got it. It's a universal lavier microphone. Oh, great. Okay, it's a tiny little thing. I didn't, it looked bigger in the picture. <laughs>
But um, anyway, um, when it says um, open the audio or video recording app on your phone, what what is that? Uh, does, does it have a, a USB connection like the, the yeah, it's got that, that, but I mean the the audio recording app. Is there uh, something so I have to download? I have no idea. Oh, okay. You know, I'll figure the, it out. Um, what you, uh, but it's possible that um, you can just plug in the plug it into Zoom right now, and it will just automatically pick up your audio. Oh. No, um, the right like that's what happens when I plug in my USB mic is that Zoom automatically recognizes uh, and I get a little notification that says, you know, know. your audio is. So uh, maybe that works. Uh, Shandon, do you have an external mic as well? I do actually. It's not plugged in, but I'm curious if you give me a minute, can I just plug it in and can you let me know if you hear a difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Of course. We'll just take a second. Of course, that was good practice for everybody. I'll just um, do you while that's happening. Did, did that work, uh, Deborah? It didn't work, no. <laughs> okay. um, the, I can tell you that in Zoom, uh, if you go down to the mute button in the bottom left-hand corner, you know, there's a little arrow beside it. If you click on that arrow, and this is good for everybody, you'll see a, a, a menu, and on the very bottom of that menu is audio settings. And if you click on audio settings, uh, you'll get a whole bunch of functions. Now, this is particularly useful if any of you are doing, having a friend uh, tape an audition with you via Zoom, uh, because you're gonna want to talk them into how to go into their audio settings so they can turn down their volume. Because if their volume's as high as yours, often what'll happen is their voice will be as loud as yours and sometimes louder on the tape, and you don't want that. If it's your uh, audition, you wanna make sure that your voice is the loudest and that they're just there to support. Okay, so I'm ready. This is with my mic. Does it sound any different? It does, yeah. It's much crisper. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, what I've been finding in our Monday night classes is that when I use the mic, um, the tapes that I get later from class are more glitchy, and I don't know why. Oh, interesting. Because I'm, I'm actually hardwired into Ethernet now. I've got a hardwired connection, but somehow the mic seems to be more than my phone can handle. Oh, interesting. So the tapes are really glitchy, so I've stopped using it. But um, I always use it when I'm recording self-tapes, but yes. I don't use it in class. <clears throat> gotcha. Yeah, the, the audio quality is, is uh, definitely better. It's like it's not you know, uh, night and day, you know, but it's like it's crisper, it's clearer, you sound like you're closer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll try it again tonight. So um, can, can you uh, tell us or put into the, the chat window what kind of, of uh, because it's a, one of the little USB mic or the little mics that plugs into your phone? It is this little thing. And it's, um, it's Video Mic ME made by Rode from Australia. By Rode. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, so I put that in the chat window. Um, I, I have uh, the Rode uh, video mics uh, for uh, DSLR cameras here at the studio. Yeah, so I, I can uh, I, I can say that I've had a good experience with equipment from that company as well. Right. Um, okay, that is it. I'm gonna go. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, four or five. If uh, does anybody else have a burning question, you know, or any question, it's like I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, great. Uh, we covered a lot of stuff in such a short time. That was really fun. Uh, I will hope to see some of you with uh, Michelle tomorrow for voiceover. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye.